right, hi everybody. My name's Dr. Justine Blaney, and this is Eric. He's a exam tech at the Justine Blaney Wellness Center, but he's also a personal trainer. I've seen a personal trainer for so many years, and it helped me so much. So I thought we'd interview Eric to learn a little bit about what is personal training, what are the benefits, and why I think it's somebody that can help almost everybody. The, the weekend athlete, the athlete who uh, thinks they know everything, and even Olympic athletes will have a personal trainer. So we're gonna talk a little bit with Eric and I enjoy a lot of this great information because I am a believer in personal training. So welcome Eric, just tell me a little bit about your education first. So for starters, uh, I've graduated from the University of Guelph Humber with a degree in uh, kinesiology, but also a diploma in fitness and health promotion. Uh, I loved it there, I learned a lot, and I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to apply some of my knowledge here, as well as at my other job. Awesome. Um, so you, how'd you get involved in personal training? So it all started uh, at the beginning of 2022. I was looking for uh, a new career, yeah. right? And then I found uh, a gym that I thought was very excellent, and uh, I attended at myself. Um, and they were looking for trainers, and I was looking for a job, so it worked out very, very well. Right. And how did you get into weightlifting yourself? So that started in uh, grade 11 at high school just across the street. Um, you know, I was always a little bit of a thinner, kind of nerdier kid, but I always knew I had that potential in me to do more. So uh, I had uh, an extra spot for a course, so I decided to take weight room. And from there, I just fell in love with it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and you also, how did it affect you emotionally then to go from, like you talked about the skinny kid, mm -hmm. right, to this muscular guy? Right. What, how did that affect you in your, you think, in emotional or in your confidence? Confidence was huge. I remember one of the kids, he was more of like an athlete, and he said, Eric, what are you doing in here? You're a geek. This isn't for you, <laughs> no. right? Oh, right? horrible. Um, but then to, you know, overcome that obstacle and to achieve the gains and scale that mountain, it was a, a huge victory that helped yeah. me to say, hey, if I could do that, what else could I do? Yeah. Exactly. And, and how about your energy? What's the difference like that for that? Well, I was always, you know, relatively high energy, but that just took me from 80% to, to 95. Awesome. Right? And so now your personal training was great. How do you make a program or decide what should be in a program for somebody? The first thing I consider obviously is training age, how much experience this uh, client has with exercises. Would it be more reasonable to start with a uh, fixed uh, range of motion like a machine, right? Are they able to do a bodyweight squat without any like caving at the knees or ankle uh, caving? And if they're not, then starting with the leg press, leg extension to get those mortar units ready to be recruited, mm -hmm. you know, will be a first step. You don't jump in uh, the deep end without any uh, like life jacket if you're just yeah. learning to swim. Awesome. And so when you make a program, well, first, maybe that's like, what is a program? Mm -hmm. Like some people just go to the gym and jump on a treadmill and, and then do a few weights, but there's no pattern to it. Mm -hmm. There's no um, recording of everything. So mm -hmm. what is a program? And why do you record what you did? Exactly. So what separates exercise and activity? Activity could be anything that, you know, involves any sort of movement, elevated heart rate, um, uh, whereas exercise is regimented. It has the goal of becoming more difficult, more strenuous over time. So I'm a huge believer in documentation. I document all my workouts, my weight sets and reps, and that's gonna allow me to kind of dial in that progressive overload to ensure that I'm not stagnant, I'm not uh, kind of plateauing. And it also allows me to identify those days where, hey, maybe I'm, I'm tired, I'm fatigued. How is that gonna affect um, mm -hmm. my program? Even nutrition, right? Can exactly. affect that, that day's workout could suck just because you ate like crap the night mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Now, just for those who are new to weightlifting, mm -hmm. what's the difference between a set and a rep? So, uh, a rep is a single movement, whereas a set is a group of repetitions uh, performed consecutively. And how does someone decide between, you know, sometimes people say like five reps, mm -hmm. I know, um, versus eight reps, versus mm -hmm. 12, versus 15, right. or 20. Like, how does somebody decide how many reps to do? What's the differences? Generally, it uh, all boils down to the, the client's goals, right? If it's more strength training, then that's uh, typically when you'd be recommending uh, that rep range from one to six. If hypertrophy is their main goal, that's gonna be that six to 12. And if they're looking for endurance, it's gonna be 12 and above. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Now, what about the, say, the female client that says, well, I don't, you know, sometimes we, I like muscles, but mm -hmm. some people are like, mm, I don't want to look bulky. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to that person that says, I just want to tone? Mm -hmm. What would be the number of reps for that? I would always uh, kind of default to that 12, right? Because right. you're going to be kind of getting a combination of that endurance as well following on that kind of ladder tail of that hypertrophy, right? But cool. regardless of what you're doing, you will see improvements across the three dimensions that I mentioned, that strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. So if you're taking your sets to failure, uh, as you should with resistance training, regardless of what you're doing, you're going to see that hypertrophy stimulus. Right. Awesome. And then we talked about reps. How many sets? Because some people say, well, I'm going to do two sets. Some people say three sets. Some people say five sets. How do you determine that for meeting the goals of the mm -hmm. client? So for that, that's kind of a, a judgment call as a trainer. Um, you take into consideration how long the session is and the amount of you know sets and the quality of those sets proceeding. For example, if you had a really, really good you know uh, three sets on the bench press, you may not have to do as many uh, pec flies or pec deck flies. Um, ultimately, it's again that judgment call and recognizing how hard you or your client is pushing. Cool, yeah. And I think also just uh, it is limited when you're with a personal training, but you can create that, that plan for what they can do when you're not there too that may be some longer. Visits. I know as a person having personal training, it actually saved me a ton of time mm. because I don't have to think and somebody's getting doing the thinking for me mm -hmm. and changing the weights, adding the weight. Yep. And sometimes when they add that weight, for example, on bench press and you don't even realize it, mm -hmm. you can do more than you think. Mm -hmm. They push you beyond what you think you can do, which mm -hmm. is a huge help. Um, so in a typical personal training session, say you were you're taking me through a personal training, what would that hour look like? Mm -hmm. So of course it's going to consist of the warm up. Uh, typically we're looking to mobilize the joints that are about to be worked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, stretch or inhibit those uh, overactive muscles. Maybe they got uh, pelvic tilt or they got, mm, you know, their, their chest muscles are a lot stronger than their back muscles. But of course the main focus of that warm up is going to be to prepare the muscles, the musculature, the active kind of component of the workout for the set and that's gonna you know come in the form of either uh, low repetition uh, low intensity work right multiple sets again not to failure that's not the goal of the warm-up it is to get the blood flow those muscles in the brain ready to complete the workout and then following that warm-up of course we're gonna start with the largest muscle groups so if we're doing like a full body day that will likely be the legs and the glutes and then after that kind of you know, go into the, the more isolation work, maybe with the biceps or the triceps. Cool, cool. And then, um, you know, a lot of people ask about mass gain, you mm -hmm. know, and it's something that you had to do. And a lot, there are a lot of men and women that just want to, it, it's not weight loss. Mm -hmm. They actually want to get bigger mm -hmm. to just show off their muscles or just, just to feel thicker, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you would recommend um, from a weightlifting perspective or nutrition perspective for somebody who wants to gain mass? For gain mass, again, I would recommend lots of fatty acids in the form of avocados or avocado oil, something very, very dense in uh, calories, something that you can squeeze in in the form of like a salad dressing or on toast, again, to kind of increase that caloric um, you know, intake to supersede the amount you're burning throughout the day and throughout the workouts. Mm -hmm. And how does it change for your workouts? If you're gaining mass, you want to gain mass. Mm -hmm. For gaining mass, um, that's going to be definitely, again, going into that hypertrophy route. And then what I like to do is kind of coincide my meals following that training stimulus where I have that super kind of, um, you know, anabolic signal going on through the body when my insulin is going to be spiking through the carbohydrates that I'm taking through the protein that I'm ingesting, pair that with, um, you know, the, the signals within the muscles themselves following that destruction of the uh, uh, muscle fibers. Yeah. Typically that's what I'm going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I know when my son, like he's adding the egg whites and the mm -hmm. lots more protein mm -hmm. with the uh, grilled chickens, um, just to get, like you said, the healthy fats mm -hmm. plus the healthy proteins and then lower reps, right? Mm -hmm. So hitting maybe not the full max weight, but lower reps in that sort of six to eight range, mm -hmm. like you said earlier. Um, so as a, you know, excited about 
nutrition, excited about being an exam tech here and helping so many people here. Um, and then in personal training, what's the kind of legacy? Or what's, what's the goals coming up for you? I would love to be a chiropractor. I feel like it's my life mission at this point, right? Awesome. It's the logical next step here. I'm helping people with their nutrition, with their fitness, but what's next? Helping them with the spinal hygiene and of course the health of the nervous system. Awesome. Well, future chiropractor here with you. If you have questions about personal training, come and talk to uh, Eric here at the Justine Blaney Wellness Center and we would be happy to help you. Take care. Stay tuned. We have lots of great information coming your way.